welcome in the Rover Sports guys, and it was a long night out tonight um, watching this football game. The Giants, several other uh, football games that we saw tonight, and I'm going to be doing a Baker Mayfield reaction probably tomorrow afternoon. I mean, this guy was inc incredibly impressive, obviously, from what you guys have seen just in the pocket alone. Um, made some big plays, but the first guy I'm going to review is one of my favorite players, a guy that I've been bullish about, and that's Davis Webb. So, without any further ado, Davis Webb started off his night with two minutes and 30 seconds left in the uh, first quarter, and this was his first series. So, here is his first pass of the game we're gonna get a simple little bootleg out here and Davis there the ball gets tipped not really his fault runs it there and now the Browns on third and 11 they're playing quarters coverage or it looks like they're playing a prevent defense so they're trying to keep everything in front so let's watch this in slow motion the Browns are literally waiting for Davis Webb and the Giants to get to a certain point. So here come the routes. The routes are wide open. They are rushing four guys. It's pretty well protected. And here he's making the right decision. The throw is a tiny bit, if I were to nitpick his mechanics a little bit. The throw is a tiny bit off of his uh, back foot. So I want to see Davis here. As he's throwing here, I want to see him stride into the ball a little bit more. I want to see his footwork be more balanced if possible. So here's Webb. Here, here he's getting set to throw. And here it comes to throw. So he's not really stepping up. He's still shying away, actually. He's not owning the pocket. And that's why he was missing high all day. He was hesitant to step up in the pocket. And it's because he's a little bit afraid of being hit because he hasn't played a lot of football. All right, so here comes Webb. This was his worst throw of the night, the one I'm going to show you right here. Um... Davis here, if we roll through the uh, play, he has a lot of he has a couple of options, but they're all really covered. Basically, he just decides to throw it into double coverage. It looks like nobody is really open, and of course, we don't have the overhead view, so it's a little harder to see. But let's see if he's telegraphed. And the bad part about this is Web telegraphs. So the one thing that is a negative is not only is Webb's footwork not very quick, because in the pocket, look at how Davis Webb is so, so rigid in the pocket, or he's so stiff, meaning that he has no leverage or base. It, it, his steps, he's pretty much, his feet are always on top of each other. He doesn't have a wide enough base when he's throwing the ball. I think it's too stiff and narrow. Too narrow of a throwing motion. Even though the guy is very thin, it's a little bit of a narrow throwing motion with this guy's mechanics. And the problem with Webb is that you expect it a lot. You know, I certainly expect it a lot. And the guy is telegraphing his throw. And also these routes are not that complex. So, you know, the one thing is that you could say for Webb is that Pat Shermer's not trying to show off a playbook and that it's a very, very basic playbook. So there he's going to do a little bit of a run. And here's a play where Webb, again, where his feet from last year, he would miss a couple throws like this last year, where his feet, where he's lined up one way, and then he can't really connect with the guy over here. He's more relying on where the guy's going to be than actually analyzing the play and eyeing up where he's going to be. So, so if we go back here, which I'm curious to do, if we go back to Webb right here, I bet that Webb is not actually looking that much of where the guy is. It's almost a no-look throw. There you see he's looking down the middle, and now he sees him breaking apart. 
steps into it nicely, throws it in a safe location. The guy's route is decently up the field, but Davis wants it more towards the sideline. And when you look back at this throw, it would have been a huge throw in the game um, right here. It would have been a huge throw. He's just a little bit rushed. And this is going to come from game reps. I mean, when you look at this throw, this is a play where I'm excited about the arm talent that Davis is going to bring to the table. Like, this is a throw that I think he can hit. Like, this is a throw that it's not a lack of talent. The ball came out well here with this throw. This is not a lack of talent play. This is basically, let's get more reps and continue to take shots like this. And there, he didn't put enough air under it. it his footwork was fine. The read was perfect. And that's what ended up happening. And he basically was just a little too antsy all night long. The guy expected a whole lot. And then, and then here you see Davis, uh, you see Baker Mayfield go on a long, long drive. So here's a play action. And this is a throw that he missed, and, and he kind of had the guy open. But the problem is, I mean, Cleveland, it's not like these guys are wide open either. Like, if you're going to rewatch this film, Cleveland looks like they're going to be blitzing a lot of guys. But here you see a guy fading back, which is zone coverage. Here it's cover, so it's a combination of zone, and here's man the man. But here it's a Tampa 2, because there you see the linebacker come to the middle of the field. So, it, it's a sort of, you know what a Tampa 2 is? A Tampa 2 is where the linebacker takes the middle of the field. So, Davis thinks that these linebackers are just going to be staying. But instead, Greg Williams, they know it's a play action. The play action fake's not very good either. The play action fake could be better. You need those linebackers to bite more. And that's what Mike Shula can hopefully teach Davis Webb is right here this is not a great play action because he's not even he's not even reaching out with his hand to hand him the ball. And here Webb, like once he sees all these linebackers here, he might want to be more patient, pull it because look, he's trying to throw in the triple coverage right there. Like he's telegraphing that throw in the triple coverage where an evolution of that could be if Webb went play action, and then instead of going here, he then rotates his body out here to try to find a guy that's single covered instead of a guy that's triple covered. So Webb right there is just playing too much into the structure of the offense and not taking his time enough, a little bit afraid. Here's a ball that got tipped, not a lot of explanation there. And then Webb, again, he's just a little bit high on each throw, which means that he could be a little bit too far back on each throw. There he steps up kind of nicely, though, utilizes the pocket. I mean, the footwork's not terrible here with this play. So Webb, a little bit slow getting set to throw. Here he's going to step up. He a good, Really good players will exceed the pocket. The one thing about Webb is you worry about his speed. You worry about, can Davis Webb buy enough time? Like, when they rush four guys... Baker Mayfield would be able to scramble right, scramble left, get outside the pocket a little bit. So can Davis Webb show us a little bit of that in the future? You know, even Josh Allen tonight showed us some of those skills. One thing that's interesting about the Webb checkdown is that he throws off of his right foot on the checkdowns, which I realized. So here goes Webb, here goes these receivers, they're only rushing four, one of the guys gets beat, so he is worried, and he needs to pretty much dump it off, whereas if he bide more time out here, he could possibly hit a big play because they're only rushing four guys. But here he hits Gallman, and Gallman makes a really good play for Davis Webb, and they're advancing the ball and moving the ball well. So let's see here. Unfortunately, Webb's a little bit late. And that's something that you can definitely point to as a criticism. I'm a huge Webb fan, but the way he processes information, that could be possibly a downfall towards his uh, overall stature. 
right here guys open he's not moving quick enough he's not processing that quickly like even though this guy can throw the football really well even though this guy's intelligent when the live bullets are flying does he have the reflexes to process quickly and that's why when you look at Baker Mayfield when you look at Tua Tagovailoa these are guys like Jimmy Garoppolo that can immediately process within a, a you know a blink of an eye here you see Webb, he's just focused on this one side, but in fairness to him, nobody is really open. It's a very good defense by the Cleveland Browns. The running game was terrible, so most of the time they're bringing four and dropping, you know, seven in the coverage. And Greg Williams knows what he's doing. Here you see this guy Burgess. I mean, he played great. I mean, this is a wonderful, wonderful tackle by this guy because you think that this is going to be a nice gainer, but Burgess just makes an incredible tackle. And then here, Gallman, I mean, you look right here. All 73 has to do is block this guy, and it's going to be a big gain. I mean, this is perfect by Webb. This should move the chains. Or you know what, I, I'm mistaken. It's just a great play by the cornerback. And really, 69 is late getting over. So let's see what 69's doing. Why didn't this work? Because right here, if you freeze it right here... Cat! Oh, gosh. Let me try to get, the, get it perfectly succinct. All right, look at this. You have two on one. You got to somehow get there. And Wayne Gallman, what he has to do as a second year player is he has to allow, he has to pause and wait for his big boys to come. He needs to cut back and wait. And these big boys, they never come either. I mean, what happens there is that it looks like the big boys... It looks like they never come. And that pisses me off because that would have been a first down move the chain sort of play. I mean, these big boys, they need to come up field and, and make a play there. You know, and here Webb, I mean, I guess he can't do any audibles, but here, you know, he goes play action and there's no one underneath. There's no hot route. There's no one leaking there. And that's what's upsetting is that you need to prepare. And then this is a bad, bad series. This is not a good series by Webb. The good news is the guy got a lot of opportunities. So first down, here we go. First of all, he's throwing, his field position is terrible, and that's why he's petrified of disaster. He played the game scared. He does not play comfortable. He's not playing the game. He's not reading anything over here. He's half field reading. He's restricted. Then he's in the pocket. He has all this pressure around him, and he's just forcing a ball into double coverage. So he's not stepping up, and he's not reading the field. And that, that's either a coaching thing or that's something that Webb needs to work on is he needs to start reading the entire field. And his offensive line is not particularly great either. And look, they're playing quarters coverage. So just throw the ball right here. Throw it right here. He's trying to force the ball into, he's trying to make too much happen, you know? He's like a guy coming off the bench in basketball that feel, that gets 10 minutes a game and he's like, I need to pop in like three three-pointers right here. And that's what Davis is doing because, you know, Ben McAdoo didn't play him, you know, is this guy overrated, Sam Darnold wasn't selected, Josh Rosen wasn't selected, these quarterbacks weren't selected, Baker Mayfield's just going out, he knows he's the backup anyway, anything Davis, uh, anything Baker does is a bonus, you know, as long as he protects the ball, but Davis Webb feels the pressure of playing great, and, and the one thing is, it's good that he hangs in the pocket right here, this is better. Um, not right here because his eyes are locked into one guy. But the second throw, one thing is, is that Davis does hang in the pocket. And that's one thing that I like that I see. That a couple of guys, younger guys like Lamar, even Josh Allen, they don't. 
but here Webb does not slide his feet to the other side. That could be a flaw of Webb, is that he can't move. When, when Webb is facing one way, he's almost like a turret, in that he needs to be able to rotate his feet. He needs to pivot to the other side. He needs to pivot from one side of the field to the other side of the field. Baker Mayfield is a shortstop. He does that instinctively. And we could go ahead and look at his tape. Um, maybe a lot of these guys don't pivot. One thing about Webb Stroke is that Webb Stroke's going to be okay. It's will his feet match the arm. Will his feet actually work quickly? And that's going to come with reps. And that's going to come with reps, reps, and reps. I want Davis getting all the reps this preseason because the Giants need to know exactly is this guy going to be, you know, a quarterback for the future. So this guy should be playing the majority of games just like tonight. That's a better drop back, a better throw, good balance. The thing is he does have good balance in the pocket. He does have good balance. He does work on his footwork. That is a very good toss. There he does the one, the one time, he does do the one leg, the right leg uh, dump off throw. And he, he, here he made the right decision, except, you know, if Webb would have stayed more patient, there was a whole shot because they're running a smash concept over here. Smash concept, this guy goes low, and then this guy's going to go out, and Webb could stick it in the hole right here. He's wide open right here. Webb, Webb could stick that in the dang hole. So what Shula's going to be telling Webb is he's going to be telling him that he could stick it in the dang hole right there. That's a hole shot. And now here, Webb, like, like I like this throw. It's just the receiver. The receiver turned his shoulder. During this throw, he gets back, gets nice depth, turns and fires. And that ball, if the receiver is taller, which he's not tall at all, but this is not a bad throw. This is, and, and what do you want to give him a chance? Because 28's coming right over there to get hit. And this guy is not turning to see the ball. So the ball's a wobbler, but it is where it needs to be. And the throw is he takes a gamble, and it's fine. And then he goes out, and this is just terrible, terrible, terrible clock management from Davis Webb. And inexcusable for a guy of his intelligence to be doing this. It's just stupid. This is a stupid, stupid play. This ball needs, he needs to be going to the sideline. He needs to be running out of bounds. This throw leads him back towards the inside of the field, Horrible, horrible, horrible play. Horrible play. A risky play. He, You know what Webb should have done? He honestly should have thrown the ball out of bounds. And then they don't get the playoff. So after that, the crowd booed. Crowds booing, crowds booing, crowds booing. All right? Third quarter, here we go. Webb comes back onto the field, get a handoff, get a little dump off here, and then this throw to Adams is a little bit behind him. All right. So overall, there's no turnovers here, and this throw is fine. It's just that he's a little bit behind, a little bit slow, but this is game speed, and Jarrell Adams also did not help him out. A couple of questionable catches that he could have had, he didn't have. I still believe in Webb. I still want to see a ton more from Davis Webb. I want to see Webb play for four or five years of preseason football because he's smart enough to do it. He definitely has the arm talent. I mean, all these throws are strong, strong throats. It's just that they're behind guys. It's just that his footwork is very troublesome. And now our expectations are tampered. And a part of it's my fault. I've been piping up Davis Webb a lot. For the next game, I just want to see him move the ball, want to see him improve from this game, and want to see the team honestly move the ball 
And I know Webb can be successful. I think Webb's going to be successful as we go down the stretch. It's just that a lot of Giants fans are going to watch this nationally televised game and they're going to have preconceived notions of Webb and they might not move off of those preconceived notions. Like with me, with Lamar Jackson, I had preconceived notions last week and I'm going to attempt to move off of them this week. So... Listen, the guy didn't turn it over. The guy's in the football game. He's never played a full half of ball yet. And it just shows you, like, even Nathan Peterman, Davis Webb, I want to see a sample size for players. And that is all I am saying. It was not a good game. His footwork is troublesome. He's sailing passes left and right. He is sailing passes. He's forcing it. He's 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 a little bit amped up. He's not taking what the defense gives him. The running game is giving him no help at all. And overall, the Giants just kind of leaked out of the gate tonight. And, and, and give credit to Mayfield. He got a lot of experience. Callaway made a couple of great plays for him. His receivers really helped him tonight. And we're going to watch and we're going to study Baker tomorrow because there's a lot that Baker did, which is pretty dang good compared to Webb and compared to a lot of other guys. But listen, it was fun. It was a fun night of football. I thought all the rookies did decently well. And without spoiling it, I'm excited to do more film reviews. So thank you guys for tuning into the show.